Would you believe it's been well over four years now since the original Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive with its glorious ones of justice hit the shelves and embraced our lives with the joys of virtual reality, but mate, in all that time, nobody's managed to master the art of getting data out of Autodesk Inventor into virtual and augmented reality on the cheap, that is, uh, with a single push-button solution. Many indie developers have tried to do it on the cheap, but it's never quite cut the mustard. It's been a case of, right, okay, I've tried that, mate. I see where you're going with it. But I'm not going to be using that in production, thanks for your time. Uh, you need a pretty detailed understanding of how Inventor works, an intimate appreciation of how CAD data all comes together. You need to understand things like levels of detail in Autodesk Inventor, whether certain parts are suppressed intentionally or made invisible intentionally. You need to understand color overrides of feature, face, and body level. You need to understand units of measure, whether things are millimeters, centimeters, or inches. If you're exporting an engine into virtual reality or augmented reality, you don't want it to import the size of a peanut because that will ruin the user experience. And that's kind of what AR and VR is all about. So those, amongst many other things, are kind of the reasons why you need to be very, very competent at CAD data to be able to master the art of getting data out of CAD and into virtual or augmented reality. So yeah, many have tried and many have failed. Possibly until now. So if that video got you all warm and fuzzy inside and excited to see more well made, I've got some good news for you because I have it right here. I can show you it, put it through its paces, test it and see what it's all about. But before we do that, let's get some things out of the way. Uh, it's far from finished. It's work in progress. It's beta, beta-est of all betas with a capital B, mate. So please don't look at this. What I'm about to show you and make a judgment on its end quality based on what you're about to see. It's got a long way to go before it's finished. It needs polished, it needs tuned. There's a lot of stuff needs to be done to it before it's actually gonna be considered ready for production. So it's a very, very early preview of where we're gonna be headed. Uh, on that note, I don't work for Symmetry, the guys who are actually developing this tool. Symmetry are the largest Autodesk partner in Europe. So if anyone can make this work, they can. So although I don't work for them, uh, I am kind of beta testing this for them. But nothing, nothing that I say in this video is a guarantee of something that might happen. I can pass comments, I can make suggestions and all that kind of stuff, but I don't work. I am third party, so nothing I say in this video is a commitment or a guarantee that anything will happen because I have absolutely no say in that. Uh, but I did used to work for them. I can vouch for their experience and their knowledge. And if anyone can plug this gap in the market, they can. So what is this all about? What's the end intention for this? It's not just a straight up dump of CAD data into VR or AR. So let's hop on over to Autodesk Inventor and I'll show you what the, the intention use got, the, the, the end intended use case of this is. So rather than just take an Inventor assembly like this 
and just dump it into virtual reality and then walk around it, which we can kind of, we, we can already do that with the likes of Autodesk VRED and you can even do that with Unreal Engine and probably Unity as well. Uh, the intention of the Unity Reflect link, which Symmetry, I think they're going to brand it as Sevilia Visualizer. Uh, you can see the tab up at the top, Sevilia. Sevilia is Symmetry's own internal branding for their own suite of products. And the intention of Sevilia Visualizer is for a designer or an engineer to sit at their workstation and then cast what they see, this, outside of their organization or even internally within their organization to another user, to a third party, whether that be a, a other design engineers, production managers, shop floor, uh, externally to suppliers, to fabricators, to clients, and to sales meetings or whatever. End goal, cast this to a tablet, to a mobile device or into a virtual reality headset. And then that end user can see what you're seeing. Obviously, they're not going to be watching you spin the camera. They'll be in a scene looking at the same data set. They can independently walk around that data set whilst you're independently spinning it around. But they're looking at the same data set as you. Okay, we can kind of still do that as well. Where this is going to be differentiating itself from the rest is the live link, which is going to be, I can edit the data in the inventor session, in the core application, cut holes through it, add parts to it, edit patterns, do whatever I need to do. And then that will instantaneously send those edits into the end user's virtual reality headset or the, onto the tablet that the end user is looking at, whether they're looking at augmented reality on casting an object onto a desk or just looking at it on a tablet they'll see a live link of the live data that you're looking at. And it's going to be done relatively cheaply as well. We're not going to be talking thousands of pounds, dollars or euros per license for this. It's going to be affordable as well. This is how we do it. Uh, don't forget beta. <laughs> it's, it really is. It's not super pretty at the moment, but we can make this work. So we go into Sevilla and then we just click export. Once you've got a data set ready to send out, you click export. And then that links you into your Unity Reflect project set. So you've got a couple of options. You can either cast the data set into a local project set, which is kind of within your local area network, which means that the data streams really quickly. It's all on your LAN. Alternatively, and it looks like it's in beta, uh, this is from Unity, you can publish the project, the assembly, into a cloud session. So that lets external people access the data, external suppliers and clients and whatnot. Uh, but we'll keep this local for now. So we'll create a new project and I'll call this uh, I don't know, test engine assembly and then click create. And then that creates us a local project, which is going to be there, right? No local publish history. And then all we do, mate, is we'll just click export one button push and then off goes the data. So in that marketing video that you saw, it estimated that vehicle 2000 parts and it published that out from inventor into the the unity session in less than two minutes which is super impressive but for something around this size sort of 860 copies and patterns of parts i suspect we're looking at around 43 to 45 seconds i would have thought to get all this data out 42 seconds close enough export done there we go that's now exported out for other people to access you then invite people to your Unity project. So that project that I created, uh, this one here, the test assembly, I would then invite other users to access that. They'd log into the Unity app on their tablet and they'd see the data. So let's do that. Right, I'm on the tablet. This is kind of role playing as someone who would be receiving the data from the design engineer. So I'm, I don't know, client design engineer. Uh, being told, right, here, I'm sending you the inventor data set. I want some feedback on it. So I'd download the Unity Reflect app and then log in as a third party to the project that the guy who's sending me the inventor data uh, has given to us. So this is, the, this is the Unity Reflect app. Don't forget, this is all beta. There's much to do here. Uh, but I'd open up the project that we're currently working on, which is the test engine assembly, that one at the bottom. And then that will bring in the engine, which is kind of floating off into the distance there. This is one of the things that needs to kind of be a bit slicker. Uh, it's sort of sends it off way into the distance, but uh, so what you can just kind of look at it in a, in the tablet and just sort of spin it around and then look at it and zoom in and zoom out on the tablet screen. But you I mean you're obviously not going to do that. What you'd rather do is go into tabletop AR mode, 
where you can point. I'm very constrained for space here, by the way. Like, I've got a microphone right in my face and a green screen right behind me. Like, literally, <laughs> no space here. But I've got, like, a very small flat surface there that I, could, I guess I could possibly cast on that. Give that a shot. Uh, let's give that a shot, then. I'll tick on that. And <laughs> there he is. Right, so we'll zoom in onto the engine. So what it does, it aligns the, the planes of the data set to that flat surface, which is quite clever. And then when you zoom in on it, it's it constrains the data set to that surface. That's the whole augmented reality aspect of this. And then we'll zoom in. Sorry, the reason the tablets is what the tablets wobble is I'm kind of pinch zooming into it. And there we go. And now I can like zoom in and have a walk around. I say walk around it. I'm sitting down. I ain't walking anywhere. But but yeah, just kind of go right into it. You can just sort of poke around and oh, okay, check it out. And then do whatever you need to do. And then you can feed back to the guy, whether it be over Skype or over, I don't know, whatever it is you're communicating over. If you need to give feedback to the guy who's sent you the invented data set, you can look at it on here, say, right, okay, yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. And then uh, he can edit the invented data set. Any changes that the guy working on invented does are then fed back into the tablet session. So I'm going to do that. You can't see me doing it, but I'm going to quick make a quick change to the this part here, the black area, uh, the fins on the end of the exhaust. Uh, I'm sure they've got a proper name. Apologies if you know what they are. I ain't an engine expert, but uh, I'll make a change to those and then push them back into the AR session from Inventor and then the guy who's made the change. The long-term goal is that this will update almost immediately. Uh, there'll be like a live sync from Inventor into the tablet, but uh, I can just do boosh. There you go. Do a quick refresh on the session. And then those changes from Inventor just almost, well, not even almost, just seamlessly update straight into augmented reality. That really is awesome. It can't be understated the power of that. I am looking at someone's live Inventor data and we could discuss the design as it's being worked on and then watch the changes unfold as they're being done and uh yeah that's awesome so that's augmented reality in a tablet it can also be done in virtual reality so we'll take a quick look at that as well and we are now in vr mate right well i mean we're not yet i've got to pull both triggers to end a vr happy to oblige in we go and there we are <laughs> we're in virtual reality and before yes this is steve hooper on my jumper hoop dog represent uh hoop dog merch not available uh, don't ask or ask if you want if you want some made available but yeah on the the vive controllers in vr we do have some menus very much work in progress the, the i quite like the layout of these and the little gradients going on on them this is a nice touch not a great deal of functionality going on at the moment but there's potential we've got some settings in here which is the kind of good looking or not as good looking options based on your, your pc's capabilities and then we've got the sync option uh, that's for as I've said a lot of times, the guy working on Inventor makes a change. He can sync the session straight from your from your one, which is which is pretty awesome. Uh, and then you can, I guess, flip between projects straight from in here. Right menu, fly and teleport. So thumbstick, fly, main thumb bit here, teleport. So this is not the jet engine. This is R two D two chilling in certainly not Tatooine. I don't know where the hell this is. This is just way. Areas. I'm so glad I don't get motion sick from VR. Uh, but there's there's uh, War R2 D2 chilling. So there's not a great deal to do here. This is where you would take over if you're looking to get something out of this session, evaluating what you're being shown. This is where you would take over by just inspecting what it is you're looking at, having that discussion with the guy showing you the data, uh, feedback, get information, evaluate, and then do your job based on what you see. So this is where you would take over from that respect. But uh, what I can say here though, is that this is looking really crispy. The textures are pin shot. I mean, I'm using a Valve Index, which is one of, if not the best consumer grade VR headsets on the market, uh, high refresh rate and a pretty decent resolution as well. So the, the, the visual clarity and fidelity is gonna be pretty clean here and it really is. I mean, I can, I mean, it would be nice if I could see myself in there, but we're not quite at ray tracing levels in virtual reality yet uh, we've got some you know uh, the, the reflections are all fake <laughs> no it's, really, it's not that's not what you're here for though uh, but yeah we can fly around him 
go inside uh, inspect internals this uh, r2 is just a solid mass of nothing so there, there isn't anything inside them but if there was you can go right inside the model just using the fly button uh, to inspect the internal elements of what it is you're supposed to be looking at. And then, of course, you've got teleport, which will let you stand on the ground at human scale, uh, which, you know, R2 is a little, he is a little dude. So I guess that's about right for R2-D2. Some feedback to the developers, I suppose. Uh, you could take some cues from the Autodesk VRED team with how to do teleport, because uh, at the moment with the teleport system, you basically just teleport and you're just pointing the same direction. You have to physically turn around to actually get at what it is you're looking at whereas with the likes of vred they've got it nailed you can twist your arm as you're teleporting and then point at the direction you want to face you know which is really nice so if i like if i want to stand there and then point towards r2 i would sort of twist my wrist like that and then i'd i'd be facing in that direction but instead i'm not i'm still pointing that direction uh, which it's a really it's difficult to get the hang of when you first get into it but once you do get the hang of it and you become fluent with that it's almost impossible to not like and need that level of teleport in VR. Uh, it's so useful. Whoa. Okay, hands off. <laughs> I appear to be floating around in space. How do I get out of this? Okay, I'm out of it. That was a nice little uh, autopilot feature they've implemented there. Secret autopilot. Was that a double click? No. Okay, I've just I just found the secret autopilot code. I'm I'm in VR. I can't do a live data sync. <laughs> I, mean, I showed you that with the AR module anyway, but. Uh, the design engineer can make a change. I can sync it. He can push it, and then it'll update the model here. We've, we do have some things in here which cl you can clearly see are work in progress. Like left, uh, left click on the trigger uh, brings up like a, a selection cube, which lets you select components. Which, at the moment, once they're selected, there's nothing I can do with them. Like I can't pull them or query them or you know take any information from them. Um, you know, there's, there's, even using grip, there's nothing. There's nothing there with them. So that's work in progress, I suppose. But as a user, at the end, viewing a, a read-only session, what would you want them to do? You, you don't want them to be able to change the data you're sending them. So you wouldn't want them to modify it or change it in any way, I suppose. You'd probably just want them to be able to maybe redline it, comment, uh, query, slice, cross-section, that kind of thing, maybe. But yeah, the selection tool is clearly there for a reason. Uh, future functionality coming in, no doubt, no doubt. Inventor to VR and AR in a single push button click working really well work to do but i think with further development uh, hard work determination uh, and taking feedback from people who know what they want from this and what's needed from this or well, this could be the plug for the gap in the market that we all really need and that we've been waiting a lot of years for so there you go mate that's a first look at what will hopefully be the go-to solution for getting invented data out and into virtual reality and augmented reality. It, yeah, it's rough around the edges at the moment, but like I said, it's beta. Don't judge it based on what you've just seen now. Just look and see the potential of what's there. The need to support, the need to see that there's interest in this to be able to, to keep plugging away at it. So they've got my support, absolutely. If they have your support, if this is something that you think your company could need or you, you'd need as a solo contractor maybe, then head on over to their video. Please do this. Go to the link in the description of my video. Their video is going to be linked there. Give it a click, add an extra view count to their video, and then write a comment on their video to say how much you're looking forward to this, how much you want this to work. Maybe put a bit of an explanation as to where you'd use this as well. Uh, and then that shows them that there's interest there. The more people, the better. They need that kind of motivation. And at the end of the comment, uh, if you can, just write down uh, Craig, who's the Padawan now, uh, and who's laughing now. That won't mean anything to you, but just you'll be safe in the knowledge that you ruined someone's day who deserves it. So there you go, mate. Thanks very much. That is what will hopefully be Sevilla Visualizer. Stay tuned for updates. I'll obviously keep tabs on this. Any updates uh, that I hear about, I'll pass them forward on the channel as well. Uh, I'll be keeping a close eye on it as it's being developed because uh, this is right up my street, clearly. So thanks to Symmetry for giving us a, a bit of an early access into it. Uh, and being able to show it on the channel and yeah thanks for you for watching and i'll see you all in the next one Doodles.